getting those little details right isn't everything for a show, but it is a really great green flag. Hello, my wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Over Analyzes. I just finished watching Yu Yu Hakusho episode, season one, episode two, and I saw a small detail that someone clearly put a lot of effort into, and I just really appreciated it. Okay, so without any spoilers, well, no, we're going into spo full spoilers here. So if you don't want any spoilers for Yu Yu Hakusho, show season one episode two you can check out the links below the video to get yourself a copy of my book humans are weird let's work it out or flying sparks dragons aliens and things that go boom in the night all right so yu yu Hakusho, season one episode two this is the episode where we get the story arc of kurama and his mother so kurama's mother is in the hospital she's ill the story arc is about doing something so that she'll get better and while she's in the hospital you see her hooked up to that classic vital signs monitor i actually used a vital signs monitor like this in my story flying sparks and the image is so distinct that it made for great advertising so in one of my short promotional videos for flying sparks i went and i found a vital sign monitor and i used it as the background for one of my videos but oftentimes there are scenes in movies, some very famous scenes, where the vital signs monitors are just complete nonsense. There's this one famous scene in a movie where the doctor says his vital signs are stable. And you look over at the vital signs monitor and for a human it is reading very clearly near fatal levels. Someone pointed out that he said they were stable, not that they were good. And then the joke became his vitals are stable, he's dead, dead is stable. So it because this is a piece of medical equipment. It requires specific knowledge to know what should be what the readout should be. This is the kind of the thing, it's what they teach it. If this is your first level of medical in hospital room knowledge. You need to be able to read that monitor, glance at it, instantly know what's going on. This monitor, most monitors measure four or for somewhere between four and six major pieces of information. First of all, the one that we're most familiar with is they measure your heart rate. That's the little green line going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Is your heart beating correctly? Some, a lot of people even know the correct shape of a heart graph. The, that follows how the heart expands and contracts. And most people know what a reasonable heart rate is. The other big, then the heart rate is the biggest, one of the biggest numbers on the screen. The other one, not as many people know. I happen to know a lot about it because I have multiple family members with asthma. It's the oxygen monitor, the O2 monitor. How much O2 is in your blood? To measure this, they put a little clamp thing on your finger and they shine a light through your finger and this measures how much free oxygen there is in your bloodstream now this number has a very narrow range your heartbeat it, depending on whether you're an athlete in peak health or someone who's not in too great health it can on average from anywhere from 40 for a super peak athlete to over 100, although neither of those are very good in normal conditions. But your O2 rate should be between 97 and 99 at all times. It's very rarely will be at 100%. It's just that's not a normal number to have on, on a normal healthy person. But it's generally going to be 98 or 99. Anything below 95 is cause for concern. Now, some of my family members are kind of, well, they're freaks because because the doctors would, they, uh, the member would, family member would go down for an asthma attack. They'd be in the hospital. The doctor would hear the machine go off. Beep, 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 problem, problem, problem. Doctor comes rushing in and they look at the screen and they say oxygen concentration is at 85%. And they look over and my family member's just sitting there looking at them like, huh, what's the problem? They're like, why aren't you dead? Why aren't you comatose? And my family's like, yeah, I'm fine. And so then they'd have to give them oxygen and get their oxygen saturation levels back up. Now, the other thing is blood pressure. Systolic over diastolic. It's how much blood pressure your heart, how much pressure your heart is putting on your blood when it's contracted versus how much pressure it's putting on the blood when it's relaxed. And 
the again, th these are fairly well known numbers. You generally know what your numbers are. You generally want a number over 100 in the top and under 100 in the bottom, and most people know this. Another one that not many people are as familiar with is respiration rate. That will be that other band. That, that'll be the other feed. How many breaths per minute are you taking? Because <laughs> you don't want to be hyperventilating. That's bad. Hyperventilating is generally associated with less oxygen in the bloodstream. So those, so those data points, respiration rate, heart rate, O2 saturation, and blood pressure are the main bits of information that show up on a real medical screen. And... It is even, let's see, for a good example, I think I did a video on the uh, vital signs readout in Lost in Space and how, how the, the vital signs readout were not what you would normally see. I think that in universe there might have been an explanation because all of the Robinsons had had their biology tweaked for the trip. But anyway, my point being, in you, coming back to the show, Yu Yu Hakusho, episode two. Kurama Suichi, the fo fox guy, his mother is sick in the hospital. And when we first see her, the readout is showing us a very sick woman. Her heart rate is at 41 beats from per minute, and the screen has a blocked outline that in red. This is a bad thing, the screen is telling us. And it is. I, now, I, I did say that there are certain people for whom that is a healthy heart rate. The more you exercise, the more cardiovascular exercise you do, the lower your resting heart rate is. So if the person on the bed is a top-notch Olympic level athlete with perfect cardiovascular health, a heart, a resting heart rate of 41 could be explained. But for your average middle-aged, middle-class woman, no, that thing should be 60. The resting heart rate is actually pretty consistent for most adults. It's 60 or right around there because when you're resting, that's kind of what all bodies average up to. And more tellingly, and what kind of made me happy was that they had her respiration rate at 16, which just is just a little high. Again, respiration rate varies between 12 and 20 when you're up and walking around. But for a woman who is resting, whose heart rate is at 40, she should have a very low respiration rate. And, and when you're sleeping, your average respiration rate is pretty solidly 12. So she's taking more breaths per minute than she strictly should be because her oxygen levels are low. Her oxygen levels are at 88%. And I've seen oxygen levels at that low because, you know, those family members of mine with their freakishly weird ability to stay conscious and aware when they should be out cold. But yeah, it, People who have asthma learn to cope with chronically low oxygen. It's just one of those things. But they got her, they got her pulse rate, they got her oxygen level right, and because her heart is beating so slowly and because she's got so little oxygen, it makes sense that she has a very low blood pressure. Her blood pressure is dangerously low. It looks to be like 70 some 75 over 40 48. It's hard to tell the screens. I had to zoom in pretty far. And then there's one of the one of the readouts on the screen is not reading at all. And it's outlined again outlined in red things. So we should be getting something here, but it's not. And so this was just a really, really good depiction of what a medical monitor looks like for a sick person. And even though this is filmed in Japan, even though this is a Japanese hospital, I, who have never been to Japan, don't speak a word of Japanese, can instantly look at that and know exactly what's going on, as could any CNA or nursing or LN or RN, any nursing person from any country could walk in, look at that, and immediately know what's wrong and what's right. Because this is kind of a standardized display. There are differences from monitor to monitor, but not huge ones. And then after the events of the episode happens, we get another look at the screen. And uh, the uh, pulse rate has gone up 19 points to a perfectly normal 60. The, uh, ox the O2 rate is at 98 now. 
I can't see the actual respiratory rate, but the blood pressure is now 120 over 60. Uh, 120 over 80, I think. Yeah, there are now two readouts on the blood pressure, and I'm not sure why, but maybe it's doing an average blood pressure, or maybe maybe the right-hand side senses a sudden spike in blood pressure because everything jumped up suddenly and the machine wouldn't have liked that. But it is just a really, really good bit. And you can tell that whoever did this research was proud of it because you see them sweep in from the side and yep the respiratory rate is exactly 12 after she gets better you can see that they're proud of doing this research and they're making sure to put it on display but it's just i find this delightful and i find this a good indicator of what is coming in the show in the upcoming episodes if the creators took the time to do the research to get these basic little details right that aren't huge important things they're just background information it tells me that the creators actually cared about this series and not just because i've had some medical training in my life not because of circumstances i really appreciated this but tell me what do you think my wonderful viewers did you appreciate the fact that the creators took the time to actually study up what would be the proper medical readouts for an ailing middle-aged woman and what would be healthy readouts for a suddenly healthy middle-aged woman but tell me what you think in the comments hit that like and subscribe subscribe button and peace out my wonderful viewers drake mccarty's leg was shattered deep in the wilderness as the flash flood closed over him something alien pulled him from the waters a military base that shouldn't exist, an ancient warrior with secrets of his own. Drake returns to his family with a whole leg and the burden of a secret he doesn't understand. In the forest around them, someone is watching, and something followed him home. Flying Sparks. 90,000 words of science fantasy adventure. The first novel in the Dying Embers universe is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo by Rakuten, Google Playbooks, and from the author as a signed copy. Get your copy now and step into a world where dragons walk the forest, aliens lurk on the mountain, and things go boomp in the night. Escape into another world with the writings of author Betty Adams. Two worlds, one of utter absurdity, one of dramatic tension, both alike in aliens absolutely astounded by human behavior. Humans are weird, short, absurd science fiction stories. Flying sparks, dragons, aliens, and things that go boom in the night. Books available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo by Rakuten, Google Playbooks, and at authorbettyadams.com for a signed copy.